I used to always watch my dad play. He played for St Martin's AC. He was pretty good to be fair. I think he played semi-professional, so I was always kind of watching watching him play. And when I was four, I remember my dad was the coach of that age group, and we were driving in, and he was like, "Oh man, I'm not sure how this is going to go. You might just want to sit down and watch for a bit. I'm not sure how the boys are going to be with you, but yeah, I was straight in. Didn't need to watch or anything. <laughs> I didn't know any difference. So I loved it. Credit to the boys back home. Like, if they didn't just see me as another footballer, I wouldn't be where I am today. I just remember one time we went over and played Southampton with Guernsey and the Southampton coach was like, you need to kind of come over here and try and see if you can you can get into the setup. And yeah, I just remember him saying that and think, okay, like no one's ever said that I could I could do something. So I went over to Hampshire Centre of Excellence when I was 11, 12, and then played there for two years. And then uh, the FA said that I couldn't keep on flying over and missing all these training sessions. I thought that was going to be the end of the England stuff. I couldn't go anywhere else because that's what I'd have to do for every club. Like I couldn't move over. So that was a bit of a check to be honest. Like I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Um, all I wanted to do was play football. Then luckily they do like regional camps. I went to the Southwest camps. Um, and then that's where I got picked up by England. And then, yeah, when I was 16, we were kind of looking to see where in England like would be best for me and to see where I could develop and kind of feel at home as well. And Brighton was a standout, like the setup was great and the ambition of the club is exactly what my ambition was. So everything's just gone from there. I'd say like the, the biggest people who kind of helped me into the club were Amy and Hope. Obviously she came through our, our DCA, our pathway, and there, there's always a bit of a standout, isn't there? She stood out physically, she stood out in terms of her, her playing ability, she was just further in front than, than most of the players. Kept an eye on her and then slowly but surely introduced her into the first team environment. The turning point, I think, for May was when I played against Chelsea in midfield. I actually thought this kid could be a midfield player because of the attributes that's physically strong, she's quick, she can defend, she can head, box to box player. And she played up against Yi, the number 10 for Chelsea, anybody that knows that woman can play. And Maya was not phased. It was unbelievable, like probably just chasing Yi around the pitch for most of it. She didn't fail to impress. And I think from there, just kept her in, this kid's going to be a player. And it's turned in, inside the six-yard area, by May Leticia. Well, what a season she's had. Her performances have been very, very consistent for a player of her very young years. But her maturity on the pitch and her contribution this season have been been magnificent for a player so young. I've just been working hard and keeping my head down and listening to the staff and just trying to improve my, improve, improve my game wherever I can because obviously I always want to be playing, I always want to be on the pitch, um, starting the games and kind of trying to make a difference. I think if she takes the advice that we're giving her, i.e. rest and recovery is important, and she's always receptive to learning, which I know she is, she strives to be better every day, I think she will make a top class international player. She's a role model to any young player in RTC and DCA that if you work hard enough and, and you dream of being a professional footballer, then those dreams can come true.